is um, I'm going to send you a link first. Have you got that link save? Yes, I just did. Yeah, if you save it. So let me share the screen with you. Here we are. <coughs> okay, can you see that screen save? Yes, I can. That's great then. That's it, that's good. Right, so let's have a listen to this. So would you make a mind map? Yes. You can call it something like perfect tenses or whatever. <clears throat> and um, we'll listen to this and see how we do, see what we can learn. Welcome back to another live workshop. In this lesson, I'm going to teach you how to use have, has, and had correctly. So here's the plan for this lesson. We will start by talking about the basics of form. That is, how to choose between have, has, and had for different subjects. Then we'll talk about the uses of the verb have. And then we'll discuss um, how to decide if the verb have should be used as a state or an action verb in a sentence. That is where you can use having the ing form correctly. And then we have four exercises in which we'll practice choosing between have and has, and then choosing between have, has, and had for the past tense. And then we'll practice using having correctly. And finally, we'll discuss how to make negatives and questions with the verb have. Now, before we start the lesson, I just wanted to point out, you can download the full lesson notes with all of the exercises and all of the examples using the link in the description of this video. All right, so let's start with the basics of where to use have, has, and have. Now, I paused it for you so that you might want to actually draw this grid if you like. Would you like to, would it be helpful? I think I know this. You know it, so you don't need to do that. Okay. I always check with students. Yes. Now, what you see on the screen is the full chart with all the rules you need to know for this verb. Now, this chart is also available in the file that you can download uh, from the link in the description. So you can see here that we have three sections. The first section deals with affirmative sentences. Affirmative just means positive. So affirmative sentences are positive statements. The second mm. section is about negative sentences and the last section deals with questions. We'll go over all of these rules, but for now, uh, to understand the basics, we're just going to focus on the first section, affirmative sentences. Remember that affirmative just means positive statements. So what we see here is if the subject of a sentence is I, you, we, they, or any plural noun, then we use have as the verb. If the subject is he, she, it, or any singular noun, then we use has. Now this is in the present. If we're talking only about the past, it's very easy. As you can see here, we use had for all subjects. Now you might be thinking, wait a minute, the pronoun I is not plural and the pronoun you could be singular or plural depending on the situation so why are we mixing these pronouns with plurals well we're not the rule is simply that if the subject is i or if the subject is you or if the subject is we they or any plural then for all of these subjects we just use have Okay, if the subject is he, she, it, or any singular, we use has. We're not saying that I is plural. Okay, keep that in mind. Now, 
if the sentence is in the past tense, of course, we just use had. So with this knowledge, let's talk about the various uses of the verb have. You see six uses listed on the screen. These are the most common and the most important uses of have. The first use is ownership. For example, we have a car. That means we own a car. So the verb have means own here. The second use is relationship. Bruce has a wife and two kids. Obviously, it doesn't mean that he owns them. Uh, here, the verb has just shows a relationship between Bruce and his family. Now, note that we're using has because the subject of the sentence is Bruce, and Bruce is a singular noun. Now, if the subject were I, we would say I have a wife and two kids. But here, Bruce is singular, so we're saying has. Now, use number three is to express features. What is a feature? A feature is a characteristic or a quality of a person or thing. For example, Anu has a fantastic singing voice. The voice is a quality or characteristic of Anu. We say Anu has because, again, Anu is a singular noun, like Bruce. The next use is to talk about illness, that is being sick. I have a really bad headache today. That means I am suffering from a headache today. Use number five is to talk about experiences. For example, I hope you have a great time at the party. That means I hope you enjoy yourself. I hope your experience is good. I hope your experience is fun. So the verb have is expressing uh, experience in the sentence. Now here the verb have is experience, uh, expressing positive experience, but we can also talk about negative experiences uh, with the verb in phrases like to have trouble, to have difficulty, to have problems, etc. And we will look at uh, some examples of that later on in this lesson. And finally, the last use, use number six, is to talk about eating or drinking. My colleagues usually have lunch at 1 p.m. Now, we can also say my colleagues usually eat lunch at 1 p.m. And the meaning would be the same. The verb have just means eat in the sentence. Uh, I just want to point out that we're saying have, not has, because my colleagues is a plural subject. If it was one colleague, we would say has, but more than one co colleagues is a plural, so we're using have as the verb. So as you can see here, there are lots of different uses, different meanings for the verb have, aren't there? And actually, if you go to your dictionary, you might find that there are even more meanings, even more uses for this verb, but these six are the most important. Now, there is an important point here that you need to know about, and that has to do with state and action meanings of the verb. Mm -hmm. Now, these four here, the first four uses are actually states. That means they express some general situation. When I say, uh, we have a car, in this first use, there's no action being performed here. It just expresses a state of ownership. Similarly, Bruce has a wife and two kids. Again, there's no action. This sentence just expresses a state of relationship. And it's the same with number three and four as well. They're general situations, they're not actions. So for this reason, it is always wrong to use uh, ing or continuous forms in these uses. If you say, we're having a car, Bruce is having a wife and two kids, Anu is having a fantastic singing voice, I'm having a really bad headache today, all of those are wrong. In fact, it's a very common mistake. This is something that I hear a lot of my students uh, say, uh, and this is something that you should avoid. If you're using the verb have as a state verb, don't use an ing form with it. However, in uses five and six, to talk about experiences or to talk about eating or drinking, you can use continuous forms. You can say, I'm having a great time at this party. That doesn't express a general situation. It, expre it expresses something I am experiencing right now. In the same way, we can also say, my colleagues are having lunch now. 
Because remember, have just means eat in this context, and that expresses an action. And we can talk about it in the form of a continuous action. Um, also, you can talk about the past. That is, you can use past continuous forms with experiences or to talk about eating and drinking. By that, I mean you can say, I was having a great time at the party, but then I had to leave. Okay, was having is a past tense. My colleagues were having lunch when our boss came into the office and told everybody to get back to work. Okay, so my colleagues were having lunch is a past tense of use. Right, so um, are you clear on how to use all of these, um, say? Yes. You are, so I won't go any further then, so I'll leave that with you and you've got the video link to watch it. Okay, so I'm going to go and let you do some practice now. I'll just escape. So the thing you have to remember is that if you're talking about ownership, relationship, a feature or a quality. That's it. So now where are we going next? Let me see. Let's go into here. So now we've got a list of keywords at the top, which are quite far from the actual exercise. So I don't know how you want to do this. <clears throat> you can write them down or you can take a photo of them and, and work that way. So which which would you like to do? Uh, I'll take a photo of them. Oh, okay, yeah, that's quick. But I think you're going to have to write them down as you use them to say that I've used this word and I've used that word. Yes. Right, have you done that? Yes. Let's go then. So between 1910 and 1970, the Australian something took 100,000 Aboriginal children away from their homes. So I'll let you have a think about that. Uh, between 1910 and 1970, the Australian government took another thousand it was the government oh that doesn't surprise me okay let me just go back just one second uh i need to check uh someone just uh uh just rang the bell and my parents aren't at home so uh, they left take, me in charge take your time I'll just check who it is i understand thank, take you. Your time. thank you yeah go ahead. Okay. Okay, safe. Is everything okay now? Yes. Sorry. That's great. So it was the government <coughs> that took all these children, and these children were known as the stolen generation, uh, and they were often under five years of something. Uh, Have a look and see what you think. Just let the woman down. Five years of age. 
Oh, really? They were uh, they were often under five years of age. Okay, that is very harsh. They were taken away from their families because the government did not believe in. Take your time. They did not believe in. Uh... Would it be foster? But I can't see what comes next. But... Oh, sorry, sorry. I was looking at the words. Yeah. Um, so they were taken away from their families because the government did not believe in the. Hmm. But when they say foster, like foster homes, they mean like the people who take care of them? Yeah, that's exactly it. But I was looking at this and I'm thinking, have you got the word rights? Did they not believe in the rights of the Aborigines? Let's have the a look. Rights? We don't have the word rights. Mm -hmm. No, I don't think so. Let's have a think about this. In the future. Interest, possibly interest. Hmm. It could be in, they do not believe, because it should be something, what they're doing is they're taking their kids away and they're saying they don't have any rights. So they don't obviously don't believe in the Aborigines as a, a, um, a valid race of people living in Australia. We know that because this is the history of it. Um, so I'm thinking it could be they were taken away from their families because the government did not believe in the interests of the Aborigines. And then let's see if it fits with the next one. They thought it would be better to bring them to, oh, that's where you've got the word, you would put the word foster here. Yeah. So we would put foster here. Um, so I believe that we'd put interests here. Interest. Is it singular or plural? Yeah, it's definitely plural so that means probably yes that's that's interest okay let's move on so many methods were used to something aboriginal babies and children from their oh dear what do you think say many methods Oops. I could put this word, for example. I know this word's not up the top, probably, but would this give you a clue? Look. Yes. The, um... So I think it's not taken. I see, yeah. It begins with an S. With an S, separate? Yes. Uh, Aboriginal babies and children from their families. Um, children were simply taken away by government and something, and later they were told they were, oh my gosh. Yeah, I saw a film about this actually, I remember. They were taken away by government officials. Officials, okay. Is it singular or plural? Uh, plural. Officials, okay. And later they were told that they were... They were uh, orphans. Really? Oh, yes, I remember they said that in the film, yeah. Mothers often were given something to sign. Documents. To sign and they could not read or write. 
and they were told it was some kind of something program. Future program? Yeah, possibly. Or um, perhaps they were told it was a vaccination program. I'm not sure. Let's leave that and come back to that one. Others were taken to hospitals and never seen by their families again. Ah, so they were taken to hospitals. So that could mean it's vaccinations, maybe. Yes. Um, in most cases, rich white families were given money to bring them up and some went to orphanages or church something. So we've got two possibilities here, future or vaccination. So, and some went to orphanages or church. Ah, yes, okay. So I'm going to put in here the letter M. So I have to think about that. Uh, no. Number. Well, perhaps yeah. some went to oh, church. No, um, it, it could have been church members, but for the fact that some went to orphanages, which is an organization and a church mission is also like an, a kind of organization, right? Yes, Mrs. Missions, because it's missions. Is it? Okay, thank you. Yes. Um, and then on top, it would be vaccination, Miss, or vaccination program. I think it is vaccination. Yeah, I think so. Vaccination program. Yeah. Then in 1995, and something was stated to bring more truth to the topic. Oh. Investigation. Yeah, it's, it's, the secret is coming to light, yeah. Investigation. And that, I believe that investigation took time, uh, took place. Yeah, look at the gap, look. It happened in 1910 and 1970, and they didn't investigate it until 1995. That is terrible. And it was stated to bring more truth to the topic. The government, however, did not something to the victims. I think this word is like a reward. They didn't reward the victims for their suffering. Let's... Reward or succeed? Hmm, wait a minute. Yeah. No, we haven't got compensation. They didn't give them any compensation then. Um, so I'm wondering what word it would be. Are you crossing the words off as we go? Yes. We got the word politician. I don't know where that would go. Oh, victims. No. We haven't used that. We haven't used. That. We haven't used politicians. No, no. Um, nineteen ninety. Nineteen Did not apologize, Mr. The victims. Did not we haven't used apologize. Well done. Apologize. Yeah, they should do that, shouldn't they? Yeah. The new prime minister. Mr. I think the site will. Uh, uh, What's it called? Uh, mark it incorrectly if you spell it with a Z because it's written up top with an S. Uh, uh, that, do you know what, say? I would automatically spell it with an S because I'm British. But when I do that, you see, look, look. Do you see what yeah, I know, I, I know, Miss. Every time I use Microsoft Word, that happens. It's, 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 it annoys me a lot. It's very annoying. Yeah, because I know as a British person that S is correct from a yes. long, long time ago. But now because it's American English, we always have to put a Z and I never am sure which to put. <laughs> okay, so the new prime minister, Kevin Rudd, was the first Australian something to make a formal apology. I should think so too. First Polish politician. Was he? Oh, okay. Okay, I've spelt it wrong, just a minute. 
I T I C I A N. Sheen, is that right? Yeah. No, still not right. Thank no, you. no. Uh, after the I T, it's an I C. Ah, oh, okay. Are you sure? And then I yes I A N. Oh, okay. That's great then. Um, yeah, you see, because when they do things like this to me, when they I put an S and I know it's right, and they say it's wrong, and I have to change it to a Z. It does something to me mentally in the fact that it doesn't exactly inspire me with confidence for spelling. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> yes. So then uh, the first Australian politician to make a formal apology to the Aborigines in 2008. However, he also said that the government would not give any money to the... Not give any money to the to the victims. Yeah, and he claimed that it was in the interest of government to something the children in the best way to succeed the children in the best way. To succeed, I'm not sure. Let's go and have a look. Out of these words, what have we got left? We have faith. Uh, future and trust. Okay, let me go back uh, now. So he claimed that it was not in the interest of the government to, I would have thought, treat the children in the best. Oh, no, it can't be. It was not in the interest. Of, it was not. He claimed that it was not in the interest of the government to. No, Mr. Says he claimed that it was in the interest of the government to. That it uh, was in the interest of the government, yeah. Oh, that's what I thought. It wasn't in the interest. It was in the interest of the government to treat the children in the best way. So there, there isn't a treat. We can't treat them. So what could we use? Miss, uh, doesn't does fate mean the same thing as treat? To treat the children in the best way, like to give them the best future. No, they didn't have a very nice fate. They had a very yes, but he's thing. saying that they 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 intended to give them a, a nice fate. Yeah, he claimed that it was in the interest of the government to... Uh, I don't think we can say fate the children in the best way. Let's have another look. Um, oh, we would put this word. Yes, we would put raise. And the government is very hypocritical. They're hypocrites, yeah. Hmm. raise yeah because on the one hand they they forcibly took them from their parents even under five years of age and then they became victims and they didn't even get any compensation money and and that wouldn't be much anyway because they they destroyed their lives didn't they and then they claim it was in the best interest of the government to raise the children in the best way but surely the best way, in my opinion, is with their original parents, but never mind. Okay, so we did a good job there. And, um, oh, we haven't finished yet, though, look. We've still got some more to do. So up to now, only one of Australia's stolen generation has received money. That's terrible, from the government. Only one something of Australia's stolen generation. Oh, I think I know what word that is. Have a think about that, say. <coughs> mm. This would be only one. Uh, one member? One member, yeah. So out of all of these, there were many of them as well, out of all of the stolen generation of children, only one received any compensation money from the government. That is absolutely disgusting. Hmm. 
Bruce Trevorrow was taken to hospital on Christmas Day in 1957. His father never saw him again and the government sent him to a white family and he came back to his mother when he was 10 years old. Oh. In his further life, he something from suffered. he suffered. He suffered from depression and turned to alcohol. In 1998, he went to court, something in getting about $500,000. Succeeded. Succeeded. Um, from the Australian government as a form of compensation. There are many others in Australia who have suffered the same. Now you can use that word you were talking about. Same fit. Yeah. Organisations are being set up to work for the something of the Aborigines and to make sure that nothing like this ever happens again. Uh, orphans. So organisations are being set up to work for the orphans. I spelled yeah. That's it, yeah. Orphans of the Aborigines and to make sure that nothing like this ever happens again. So I think we did a good job there. Let's um, go and check. We've got 85%, it says. Let's go and have a look. Doesn't tell us which ones were wrong, but... Um, you know, I, yes, I think the blue ones are correct because we got most of we got a lot correct. Yeah, so the ones that aren't in blue. Yeah, so it wasn't apologising. It wasn't interesting. I wonder if we get the chance to do them again. Perhaps we do. Yeah, let's take them out then. So we'll have to think of something else to put in here now. Yeah, we've got just two boxes. <clears throat> so I think we did a, a wonderful job, a splendid, fantastic job anyway. But. Let's see if what we can do. I'll let you think about it and you tell me when you're ready. Uh, can we say that uh, that they did not believe in the future of the Aborigines? I think so. Yes, why not? <clears throat> Perhaps that's what they wanted. Yeah. yeah. I think I would go one step further than that though and say something stronger if I was writing an essay about it. I might add that um, the government had an agenda to break up the community of Aborigines because they were settlers. And um, as history always depicts, the settlers usually come into the country and um, they have a tendency to want to be in charge. And so the natives, and then you could compare it, you could do a cross-cultural comparison to the Red Indians, for example, who were the original natives of America, or even the, um, the Palestinians, who are the original natives of what should be known as Palestine. So it's interesting but it's history repeating itself. Yes. So what about the second one? The government, however, did not something to the victims.
there's nothing makes sense with with this except apologizing. Apologize to the victim. You think it's yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah. But what I <clears throat> what I was going to say, and I forgot to say it, was we, remember we work a lot with these sites and we do know that often they make errors in the marking. And sometimes, I mean, we did, we did a test, I did a test, I don't know if it was with you or another student, but we actually looked at our answers and they marked seven wrong. And I got the student to take a photo and then we checked the answers. And in fact, all that seven were really right. So we can't totally 100% depend on their, the accuracy of their marking scheme always. Yeah, I think you're right. I think it would be a to not apologise to the victims. I'll just have a look, see if I can find anything else. No, I can't see anything else that would go in there. I think it would have to be apologise. Hmm. Yeah, and I've spelt it correctly. Let's try again. Eighty nine, it's gone up to now. Okay, it's gone up to eighty nine percent now, which is pretty cool. It's pretty good, isn't it? Yeah. But it's still saying apologize is wrong. Never mind. Just try, just try to write apologize with an S. Try to just write it with an S and then uh, ah, turn it in. Okay. I'm just curious yeah. to see if that's okay. what it is. Let's do that then. Yeah, let's write it correctly. Let's write it correctly. Ninety-three. Well, that was good, even with a spelling mistake, which isn't a spelling mistake. Yeah. <laughs> okay. We seem to have got orphans wrong, it says. I never noticed that one. But organisations are being set up to work for the orphans, and they are orphans of the Aborigines. So I don't know what else they could be. Maybe they victims of the Aborigines? They could be victims, yeah, yeah. Let's try that. But did we use victims somewhere else? No. Okay, then. So if we've not used it anywhere else. 93, so it's gone down now. Okay. We still got that one wrong. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we use victims here, look. And they said it's right, so it can't be victims and it's not orphans. Oh, it did. Yeah. So I have no idea what it could be. Victims, orphans. Have we used foster? No, we can't say organisations are being set up to work for the foster of the Aborigines. Uh, yeah. It would be the children, the children or the victims or the family members or something like that oh well it's like doing a crossword puzzle <laughs> okay let's leave that then so anyway i think we got up to something like 89 percent or something so i'm in here now <coughs> and um, let's do this grammar practice so have a look at the sentences and tell me which word we should highlight as correct. Okay, so? Miss, you're still on the same site. Uh, oh, I've got to stop the share and share again. Sorry, let me do that then. Thank you for telling me. Can you see it now? Uh, it is loading. Yes, I can see it now. That's great. So. Have a think about this and see if it is was or were. Was. The first one was was. The sentence was done. Okay. And her advice? 
was perfect for the situation. Okay. And then number three. The police are coming. Number four. Uh, is. Okay. Most of the movie. Take place in Japan. You sure? Yes. Takes no, take. No, it's takes. Yes. Yeah, takes. Good, good. And Are you sure? I thought it was take place in Japan. No. Most of the movie it takes place in Japan. Or I could say most of the movie took place in Japan. But I can't say most of the movie take place in Japan. And number six. Uh, most of the students uh, take the bus to school. Good. In the hot summer, number seven. In hot summer, uh, summer. Uh... Ten miles are too long to run. Oh, yeah, because uh, we've got more than one mile, and then there's an S. Yeah, so yeah, 10 miles are too long to run. Yeah, every day is wonderful, every day is different and wonderful. Um, black or white is your choice. Although this sentence here, if I, if I was speaking it, I might well say is. I might say in the hot summer, 10 miles is too long to run. But I feel that if I'm writing it, because it's plural here, I should obey yes. the grammar rule. That's why I picked it up. Yeah. So now we're going to um, number 10. Someone. Someone does doesn't yeah if someone doesn't um, doesn't understand it good and let's press finish when we see this we know we're in that site that we're not we don't quite trust their marking but never mind so oh it's looking good should they mark that as wrong but they shouldn't because um trust me I do know that I cannot say most of the students. Oh, wait a minute. This is not the, the question. So they're not. Oh. No, you got it right. Yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm getting confused. Yeah. These are the right ones in the green. Yeah. So all present and correct yes. so far, then. Okay. But this one, they're saying no. Oh, the police are coming. No, we can't say the police. Does anyone say the police is coming? No, I have to, I'm going to argue with them and say they are wrong. So this is another error they've made because I wouldn't say the police is coming. I would say the police are coming. So remember, the police are more than, more than because one person. Exactly, exactly. They're a collective body. They're more than one. Yeah. So in this case, they are wrong. Yeah. Okay. So they say eight out of ten, but in fact, that's not true. So anyway... We did a good job there. So now we're going to somewhere else. So just, um, ah, here we are. So now we're going into, um, oh, let's go into this one. So are you the kind of person you'd like to be? And um, what we have... Uh, Miss, can you stop sharing and then share again? Because I can't yeah. see... Uh, Sorry, <laughs> I'll do that. Yeah. Thank you. I think it's this one. Do you see it? Uh, yes, now I can. Good. Are you the kind of person you'd like to be? So we've got multiple choice words to choose from. So I'm going to let you have a think about it. I'll open the box and let you think.
Not one occasion or another. I never felt sorry for doing something you shouldn't have done, which, which you should have at one occasion or another. Yes, I think that's a good choice. Okay. Yeah. And the next one, I'll open the box and you can have a sink. There is no uh, purpose in getting uh, depressed or no point in getting depressed. Yeah. Um, when I looked at it, I thought advantage. There's no advantage in getting. So I suppose we could use purpose or advantage. Yeah. So let's go on to this one. I'm getting depressed about it. It's no. It's use crying over spilt milk. Good, yeah. Open this one. So what is the sentence? But they may be a little some game in thinking about exactly what happened and why, because you might be able to make some conclusions. Or the future? Oh, no, it's not that. Think again. Or draw some conclusions? Yes, yes, yes. Draw some conclusions. So one thing we all do now and again is to lose our... Hmm. To lose our temper? Yeah, lose our temper with a friend or close... Mm -hmm. Or a close member, a relative. We'll close something. The odd thing is, yeah. What What do you think it is? Uh, relative. Or close relative. Yes, yes, of course. Or close relative. The odd thing is that we move, we more often display great anger at someone we're... Um, So when you say that someone is keen, what does that mean? Uh, well, I'm looking at that and I'm thinking familiar with or keen on. Um, if you're keen on someone, you like them a lot. If you're familiar with someone, you know them you very know that, well. Yeah. I think it will be keen. You're keen. Yeah, but the only thing is you have to say if you're keen on and we can't really say keen of than towards strangers. So it's not that one. Miss, what does fond mean if you're fond of someone? Oh, yes, you got it. Yeah, it's fond. Yeah. Um, because it, we can say fond of. So, yeah. Um, if you're fond of someone, you like them very much and um, you think a lot of them. Yeah. And the next one. Let's open that one. So the explanation may be that we see friends and relatives as a kind of safety net, an opportunity to let off a bit of steam in a safe ah, environment. Yes, well done. Whereas the something of insulting a stranger. Mm. The consequences of insulting a Good. stranger. Yeah. The consequences of insulting a stranger or a colleague. Colleague is a work colleague. Colleague at work could be far more serious. Being honest is usually uh, is usually considered. Mm, we could say that, but what or we've got to have of. So we can't say considered of. We have to say thought of as a virtue. Thought of, yeah, yeah. You can say regarded as thought of, yeah. And undoubtedly, this is the I want to end the sentence. You can't say this, this is the, the case. This is the case. Good, good. Yeah. On the other hand, we have 
all experienced occasions when we have spoken our healing. No, it's something to do with being outspoken and saying what you really think. Maybe you don't know it. <coughs> um, I'll, I'll give you a clue. If I don't like someone because they've been rude to me, I'm going to give them a piece of my mind. So when they have spoken our minds? Yeah, spoken our minds to someone. And um, something, then exactly what we feel. Ah, oh, okay. So you're informing them. Describing uh, them. Uh, no, you're informing them. You're informing them exactly what you what we feel. Telling them exactly what. Telling them. What telling we feel. them exactly what we feel, and then have found ourselves uh, upset. Uh, upset. Full with feelings. Found ourselves full with feelings of no. guilt and remorse. No. no, try something else. Found ourselves overcome with feelings of guilt overcome and remorse. Overcome with feeling or guilt and remorse, yeah. Perhaps we should have kept our mouths shut. Can't win, can we? <laughs> Let's check. Can we check? Hang on. It's not letting us check. Why is it not letting us check? Did we not finish? Um, we have finished. Well, that's strange. Well, I don't know why it's doing that. It normally works perfectly. No, it won't budge. I tell you what I'll do. I'm going to actually give you the link and you can check it yourself later because I can't check it now. For some reason, it's not letting me check. But never mind. But I can assure you that I'm 100% sure that we got all of this correct anyway. But it's nice to actually check it. So let me send you the link. And you can save it. Now, um, where else are we going? Let's see, we don't have long, so let me pick something simple. How about this? Make it a bit bigger. That's better. And um, so, should we do a little bit of word order? Uh, sure. Look for the capital letter. Is there a capital? There should be a capital letter. But I don't think I see one. Oh dear. No, I never. Hmm. So you tell me what you think it is. I think it's quicker if you speak it, really. Yes. Uh, in the morning at nine o'clock, uh, he always uh, drives out of the garage. Now, I was going to say, um, he always drives his car out of the garage at nine o'clock. I don't know why, I was going to put the subject first, which is he. But I suppose you could say at nine o'clock, uh, as you put it, yeah. Okay, let's move on. In the morning. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you began with in the morning at nine o'clock. But I don't know why, but I immediately thought of putting the subject first. So that's. I think um, both were. Yeah, both of them are right, but one would be passive, wouldn't it? One would be something else. Um, so let's look at the second sentence. Uh -huh. I always look for the person first before I start. So. Yes, it says Miss Hodge. Uh, 
Mrs. Hodges, uh, yeah. Often, maybe Mrs. Hodges, often. There's something missing in this sentence, isn't there? <clears throat> yes. Yeah, I think it might be a bus. Let's say Mrs. Hodges often takes the bus to town after breakfast. I think this is supposed to be the, yeah, probably something like that. Okay, let's move on to the next one. Um, I don't know if there's a capital letter or not, but we'll have a look and see what we can find. So they would be the subject, wouldn't they? Yes. Let's start with they. They rarely is they rarely find a parking place near the shops. Yeah, because what we did here, we took the subject, then we took the, the adverb of frequency, and here we did uh, we took the subject they, and we looked at um, something they did. So we looked at the uh, <coughs> the describing word. Yeah. yeah. Just add the adjective, yeah, okay. Next, then we have this sentence. Let's go on to this one, which is Mr. Hodges. Mr. Hodges parks. Sometimes in the garage, in a garage. Parks what? What does he park? His car uh, sometimes in a garage. Park. Yeah, but for some reason, we'd have to say Mr. Hodges parks his car in a garage sometimes. Or we could, I suppose we could say Mr. Hodges parks his car sometimes in a garage, but it sounds a little bit messy. So it's better to say what he did and where he put it before we use this adverb of frequency here. Okay, so next sentence. Uh, it would be I, wouldn't it? I think I. And then we can sometimes, use I sometimes. Uh, we can say I sometimes. Yeah. I sometimes fly with my parents to Florida in winter. In, in winter, yeah, that's great. Okay, we've now run out of time safe, but I wish you a lovely day and um, a good evening tonight. Nice. I'll stop the share. I've given you everything, so that's great. So I'll see you um, Sunday, I think, yes? Yes. Okay, have a nice weekend. You too, Bye. Mr.